All right, so 2.3 part two is the ambiguous case, and that's on pages 100 to 113. And we're looking at the curriculum outcome today of 20.5, which says we need to demonstrate understanding of the cosine law and sine law, including the ambiguous case. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to identify when the question you're dealing with is in fact the ambiguous case. Number two, to be able to determine how many triangles could be formed when, the, when given ambiguous information. And number three, to be able to solve both of the triangles that could be formed when given ambiguous information. So the word ambiguous means something that can be open to more than one interpretation. And when we talk about the ambiguous case when solving triangles, we will be given information that could be interpreted in more than one way. So for example, we're going to be asked to solve triangle RTG if angle R equals 40 degrees, side R equals 12, and side T equals 15. So at first glance, it looks like a normal question. So if I start to draw my triangle, if I put a 40 degree angle here in the bottom left, um, this would be angle R. I'll put angle T over here, so side T is 15, and side R would then be opposite angle R, which is 12. Now the problem is, this would be angle G. The problem is that you could say that this side length is 12, but some people might draw in a different side length that's also 12 and make this an obtuse triangle. And that they might be entirely right, so this could be 12 or that could be 12, and that's why this is ambiguous information. So um, when you're given an angle, its opposite side, and then another side, you're looking at the ambiguous case. And in a lot of cases, people will call this side-side um, angle information. So you're yeah, given a side, another side, and then the next angle. So that's important to know. Now, the next part is how do we determine on how many triangles can be solved then? Because this could be 12 going this way, or it could be 12 going that way, or there's a, uh, another option. There couldn't be, there might not be any triangles formed whatsoever. So what we have to do is we need to compare, well, we, this side length of 12 to what would it would be if this was just a plain old right triangle. So if it looked something like this. So angle R, angle T, and angle G. So if this was 15, and this is still 40 degrees, we want to know what this side length would be to, so we can compare this 12 to this side length. So to do that, we'll use a sine ratio. So that sine of 40 degrees is equal to opposite, which is x, over hypotenuse, which is 15. And that means that 15 times sine 40 is equal to x, and that is actually x equaling 9.64. So if this side length was 9.64, it would make one triangle, and it would be a right triangle we were given a side length of 12. So not only is it greater than 9.64, it means that we're gonna be able to make two different triangles um, because it happens to be less than 15 and greater than 9.64. Okay, so now we've got our two different triangles. Here's one triangle where we've got a 40 degree angle, 12 and 15 as our side lengths, but this is happens to be, angle T is an acute angle. And here's our other triangle where we have 40, 12, and 15, and angle T is actually obtuse. So we need to solve both these triangles, and solving means to find all the missing angles and the missing sides. So to do that, we're going to use the law of sine. And that says that sine 40 divided by 12 will give us sine of T divided by 15. And when we manipulate this thing, that means we move the 15 over here. So we get 15 sine 40 over 12 equals sine T. And if we go second function sine of that thing, we get angle T equaling 53.5 degrees. Well, now angle G is easy to find because angle G is going to be 180 minus these other two angles. So that's 40 and 53.5. So angle G is equal to 86.5 degrees. And with knowing angle G, now we can use the law of sines one more time to find out what side G is. So we can say sine of 86.5 over what we don't know, which is G, equals sine of 40 over 12. And when we, we manipulate this, we'll multiply the G up over here and move the 12 and the sine 40. We get G equaling 12 sine 86.5 divided by sine 40 and we get side G being 18.6 I believe we were talking about centimeters so we've solved this triangle we found all the missing sides and all the missing angles but we still have the second triangle to find 
So we'll do the same thing. We're going to find angle T first. It's the only angle we can find first, and that's because um, we have the opposite side to angle T. So we've got sine 40 equaling, or over 12 equals sine T over 15. But we just did that calculation over here. We know that angle T is supposed to be 53.5, but it's clearly obtuse. So the problem is that we haven't considered um, reference angles. And the fact that your calculator will give you 53.5 as an answer when you go second function uh, sine of 15 times sine 40 divided by 12. But you have to consider that with the cast rule, that could be an acute angle in angle one, because that, or sorry, quadrant one, because that's positive, or it could be an obtuse angle in quadrant two, because sine is also positive there. So angle T in this case is actually equal to 180 degrees minus 53.5. So once we found it in the first scenario, we don't need to find it again in the second scenario, but we do need to subtract it from 180. And we get an answer there of 126.5 degrees. Now, if this is 40 and this is 126, we still need to find angle G. So angle G is equal to 180 minus 126.5 and minus 40. And we end up with angle G being 13.5 degrees. Now that we have angle G being 13.5, we can use that to find out what side G is supposed to be. So again, we're gonna go sine, but instead of 86.5 degrees, we're, we have 13.5 degrees all divided by side G, which we don't know, and that equals uh, sine 40 over 12. Manipulating this thing again, we get G equals 12 sine 13.5 divided by sine 40, and you get that side length of G being 4.4 centimeters. So, if you have the ambiguous case, you're going to be able, you might be able to make two triangles. And if so, you need to be able to solve them both. The only thing you need to really remember is that the first time that you solve for this, this uh, angle in the bottom right corner, you're going to get an answer. But the second time, you're going to have to subtract that answer from 180 and then use the law of signs to get you on your way. Here's our second example and final example. It says consider triangle ABC that has angle A equaling 32 degrees and side B equaling 10 centimeters. How long would side A have to be to create A, a right triangle, B, two triangles, or C, one non-right triangle? So I always like drawing a diagram. It helps me get my head around things. I've got angle A equals 32 degrees, and you always want your the other side that you know to be above angle A if possible, the, above the angle that you were given. So let's answer this first question. It says, what does side A have to be? That's the opposite side here. If you want to make a right triangle. Well, if I want to make that a right triangle, it just needs to be sine of 32 equaling opposite, which is X over hypotenuse, which is 10. So X equals 10 times sine 32. So really it's always going to be your adjacent side to your angle. Um, multiplied by sine of your angle. Now I know technically this is hypotenuse, but we're going to use the term adjacent for a little bit. And that gives you 5.3 centimeters. So to make one right triangle, your angle has to be, or sorry, the side has to be 5.3 centimeters. So what if it was going to be two triangles? Well, if it's going to be two triangles, that would have to be greater than 5.3. So the side length here has to be greater than 5.3, but it also has another restriction. It can't be greater than 10 because once it's greater than 10, if we were to draw it out this way, it would go past angle A. So it actually has to be between 5.3 centimeters and 10 centimeters. Can't be 10 centimeters. It has to be less than 10 centimeters. So it has to be between 5.3 and 10. If we want one non-right triangle, that means it would have to go out this way. And that means your side length would have to be greater than 10. Because if it was greater than 10, we wouldn't be able to swing it over to the left. It would have to swing all the way over to the right. So one non-right triangle would have to be greater than 10. And we're always talking about here what, um, how long side A is going to have to be. Now, how does this change if we're, the angle we're given is actually 120 degrees? So if it's an obtuse angle that we were given, well, it actually makes our job a lot easier because we know that if the side length 
uh, let me just label this, this is side A, this is angle B, and this is side B. If side length A isn't greater than 10 centimeters, it's not going to make a triangle. Because anything less than 10 centimeters won't quite make it over to the other side. So you're going to get one triangle if your opposite side is greater than 10. And you're going to get zero triangles if your opposite side is less than 10. Now, you can't get two triangles here because this is an obtuse angle. So you really have to only have two options. So once you recognize that the angle they gave you is obtuse, um, your job becomes just a lot easier. So in summary, the ambiguous case is when you have been given an angle, its opposite side, and one other side. So we call, we're calling that S, S, A, side, side, and angle. If the given angle is acute, you have three different possible situations. Number one, you could have no triangles formed, and that's when the opposite side is less than your adjacent side times sine theta. Two, you could have one triangle formed if the opposite side, that should just be triangle, if the opposite side is equal to the adjacent side or if the opposite side is greater than the adjacent side. And number three, you could have two triangles formed if your adjacent side times sine theta is less than your opposite side, which is also less than your adjacent side. So if the given angle is obtuse, you have two possible scenarios. You could have no triangles formed if the opposite side happens to be less than the adjacent side, or you could have one triangle formed if the opposite side is greater than the adjacent side. So that wraps up the ambiguous case. Really, you need to be careful in what you're doing. Um, draw a diagram and it'll definitely help you out. Your assignment is on pages 108 to 113, numbers six to nine, 11 to 12, and 17. Good luck and we'll see you in class.